Nearly every culture has a tale about how an ordinary piece of firewood becomes a dull-witted and naughty human child. The enchanted premise must appeal to something eccentric or unstable in the human brain. The story always begins with a humble carpenter, desperate for a son, but without the ability to acquire him in the usual way, he makes one out of wood. Pinocchio, come play with my pet termites. Is that Stump, your mother? I smell rotten wood. You stinkhead smell of pigs and old cheese. I'd kick your butts if my feet worked better. The wooden juvenile delinquent has a companion, as unlikely as himself, a talking cricket. Don't embarrass your father, Pinocchio. Be a good lad. Go to school. Shut up, cricket, or I'll squash you like a uh, bug. I want adventure. My school book was worth something. Father just didn't know what. The other puppets see Pinocchio as kin, and Fire Eater gives him some money for Geppetto. Hmm, will that money make it home? No, would be a good guess. Pinocchio, stay away from those hungry creatures. They are up to no good. They're not related to beavers, are they? Or termites? They look friendly enough. Oh, hello, boy. Perhaps you'd like to make a little mischief with us. Have a little fun, hmm? Fun by all means. Big fun. At least for some. Are you by chance holding any serious money? Fun is my little name. Let's go! Idiot should be his middle name, and the cricket knows it too. Having so little character of his own, Pinocchio's a miserable judge of it in others. Hung up like laundry by would-be assassins, who are not so bright themselves, a fairy with blue hair rescues him. Forever the fool, Pinocchio suspects he was the victim of mistaken identity. Cat and Fox hung the wrong talking puppet. The mind boggles. Now he plants his money, expecting something. I'm not silly, you old pea brain, though people do say I'm strange. Not bloody likely, here or anywhere else. Such silly creatures shouldn't be allowed to roam these mean streets. I seem to have, uh, um, misplaced some gold pieces, and I was, um, uh, wondering whether anyone had, uh, turned it in. Well, your strangeness is going to jail for its own protection. So, he does his time, and when he gets out of the jail, he manages to leave the simple village, we're not allowed to ask how, evidently, to look for the blue-haired fairy. Subject being sidetracked from what's important by any nonsense, Pinocchio's search for the fairy with the azure coiffure is trumped by Toyland. He plays around for months, and then, because he's Pinocchio, finds out she's dead. I can't cry too much. What a walk toward... Ah, oh, the sentiment, the depth of feeling, the... Ah, distraction heals the pain. If only it would do so much for me. Look, Cricket, a wonderful wagon and fine donkeys. I wish I was on it. I can see by your ears that the cliché, be careful what you wish for, would be wasted. You should be looking for your father. I wish you'd go. A circus buys this newly minted donkey and takes him away to teach him tricks. But Pinocchio becomes lame and is sold to a man who has a different fate in mind for him. Come here, little donkey. I just want to pet you, soft skin. Touch me again, you pervert, and I'll kick you into next year. I'll have your skin for a drumhead, or know the reason why, you useless brother of a mule. In the course of his escape, the donkey transforms back into a marionette, but as he swims to land, he confronts a more aggressive obstacle. Is that you, father? Have I found you at last? You have, my boy. There must be worse places to live out our days. I hope you're right. I'll try to be grateful for what we have. Each other. And the cricket, of course. 
Pinocchio is reunited with his creator in the belly of a gigantic shark. There's a whole community in there. Everybody's pretty happy, except the sun doesn't shine and it smells of rotted fish. Otherwise, it's tolerable. Not that anybody had a choice. That's a real ending? <laughs> Real is the baby who never cries, or the politician who never lies. Speaking of which, that lame bit about his telltale nose, rubbish. Like lying was his major problem. Horse poop! If you want to see how everything went off the rails, play on. Geppetto crafts a self-animating puppet, and the craft is not the hammer and chisel sword. Make it stinky. Let's kill the clean! The old carpenter had him. There's a dark art at work here. Make it foul. and stuff. despite his father's protests and the best efforts of an insect. No. 
No wonder. Boys will be boys. But wooden boys may be devils. <laughs> Make it rotten. But stomp it! Pine Punk knows how to treat a gate. Nothing like a helping hurt from the powers of darkness. Pinocchio trades his books for tickets to a puppet show. Naughty. But he can do more. Make it gross. Let's stomp them into submission. <laughs> The 
Pinocchio is accosted by cat and fox. Eh, this is hardly a mugging. This looks like cuddling. We hate cuddling. Make it rotten. One by all means. Rump and stump. Pinocchio buries his money, expecting it to multiply. What he should expect is misery, owing to the fact that he has sawdust for brains. Make it foul. Make a mess. Thank <laughs> you. 
stomping, butt kicking good. In the town of Simple Simons, Pinocchio reports his money stolen. Foolishness, even if misguided, should never go unpunished. Make it nasty.
your strangeness is going to jail for its own protection. Pinocchio's impertinence lands him in jail. Certainly he was stupid, but criminal? No! He wants revenge, but he can't do more than yell at the guards. Make it disgusting. Pinocchio visits the land of toys. Blech, a place where children are happy. N'existe pas, in my experience. The idea is almost as wrong as a wedding. Let's make them all regret being here. Make it nasty. Let's muck it up.
Let's get this over with. Pinocchio, slow as ever, doesn't realize the children are turning into donkeys. The childhood diversion, pin the tail on the donkey, becomes something more sinister in an adult setting. Make it reversed!
Pinocchio is sold to a man who wants to use his skin as a drumhead. That's wonderfully despicable. Make it nasty. Let's grim it! it. Stomping butt kicking good.
Pinocchio and his fellow shark dwellers have built a merry village in the monster's belly. How ridiculous! Make it disgusting. Muddy it up! Geppetto and Pinocchio are reunited, a classic father and son reunion, but not complete without a little satanic ritual. Pinocchio finally transforms into a boy. As if becoming human will make him less bad. Nah, real boys are just as naughty as the wooden satanic ones. Make it rotten. Stop! 
Stomp it! Stomp it! There seems to be split up here. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Ah, oh, that's better. Let's make that real gross. This might be an instance of the rubric of no good deed goes unpunished. If we thought that turning a piece of wood into a boy was a good deed. Let's get this over with. the dark implications of a walking, talking puppet. But who made this thing? An evil shaman? A necromancer? A demonologist? And how would such a twisted mannequin really treat the so-called normal? This wild child makes delinquents and criminals vomit from fear. He's an ugly, murderous little brute with a taste for the suffering of others. <laughs> Reminds me of me. Run, hide, whine, cry! Means nothing to me! I do as I please! Must you be so mean, Pinocchio? What goes around comes around. What goes around is this rock! You rarely see a puppet with a good arm. 
I know I didn't need a ticket. This cast appears to lack certain essentials, but he evidently really wants to see the show. Hello there, big boy. Up for something cruel, unusual, and very stimulating? Mm. She's talking about a religious experience, Skinny. Get your tiny mind out of whatever trough it was in. Okay, fine. As long as someone gets hurt. Little did he know, exorcism always hurts the exorcised more than the exorcisers. If that's a word. Funny that way. Hurt to help, they say. The boy is a psychological wreck, not a criminal. The world blames the victim. Always the simple response. What did he do to deserve... Ah! A bleeding heart with blue hair? It's too much! I suppose the blue-haired fairy has a point of sorts, but she misses one too. My gold pieces have vanished. I don't know who stole them or how, but everyone will pay for the insult. I like it like that. Return my gold pieces or I'll hold my breath. Uh, no, 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 no. I'll flay everyone in sight. And those out of sight too. Hmm. He overplays his hand. In this village, that sort of reckless, if hyperbolic statement is regarded as a threat and as such, immediately challenged. Look there! I've made those silly boys into useful or edible donkey without even trying! Besotted by visions of power and his own nastiness, he mistakes his will for the dark art that made him. He never sees how his lack of brain power puts him at risk. Nice. <laughs> Brayer that, ya boob. You keep my fire stoked all winter. Bug everyone. A mad puppet on the loose. Slay the beast! Slay the beast! I'm happy to say that some serious crowd control will be required. Lives may be lost! See, here again, Pinocchio speaks too soon. When he says he's happy, he knows not of what he speaks. Finally, Pinocchio, you found your way to the dark side. Oh. <sighs> It was a great struggle to get you here. I'm sharing space with fish guts and rotten body parts because of you? Thanks, Dad! Don't be surly, or I'll make you into a real boy and feed you castor oil. We're here to fulfill my plan. <laughs> oh, Dad, you're beginning to sound very strange. Can we leave, please? Ah, yes, Pinocchio. You can leave when Geppetto works his magic. You're about to take a ride. Don't you just love it when the shark blows up and everything else is unresolved? I mean, if you tried to put a bow around that mess, it would sink like an anchor in a fishbowl. May all our stories end so well. Until next time.